In the previous episode, we were continuing work on this E90 BMW with the N55 engine. We ended up sourcing a low mileage N55 out of a wrecker, and of course we ended up having to refresh it just to make sure that it wasn't going to leak or have any issues for reliability in the long run. I know, ironic, N55 and reliability. But anyways, we threw a Turbo Parts Canada Stage 2 or 2.5 turbo onto the automobile, 8HP 45, and a bunch of other things like an upgraded meth nozzle to make all that steam. Everything was running great until it wasn't. We went to start the vehicle and it had some strange intermittent issue. <laughs> For whatever reason, it started to stall when it got up to temp or something ended up warming up and it wouldn't restart afterwards. So there was some sort of a thermal related issue and we couldn't quite figure it out at the time. <laughs> Mechanically, the vehicle was perfect. We went over it inside and out. Eventually we determined that the DME was the culprit and we ended up sourcing a DME, CAS and the key all from the original vehicle from the same wrecker that we ended up getting the engine from. One thing I really hate doing other than repeating myself is repeating the work that I've done. For whatever reason, BMW's infinite wisdom, they decided to put the DME on the N55 under the intake manifold. So it resulted in us needing to rip off the intake manifold and to replace the DME on the bench. It wasn't the end of the world, but it still took time and it was pretty annoying when everything was completed, torqued, right to spec and you gotta take it apart. When the DME was removed, we put it on the workbench and I started to take it apart. Now, for whatever reason, the urethane or maybe BMW sealed it with some sort of a glue, I'm not quite sure. We tried to take it apart to see if there's anything obvious or evident in some sort of a fail. With the N54, you'll usually see a damaged MOSFET or a capacitor that's having an issue, but in this case, we really didn't see anything. And uh, we couldn't end up taking the board completely out because it looked like the pins through the plastic connectors were put through the DME board and soldered, so I didn't want to solder them or desolder them and uh, take it apart. We couldn't find anything, but we were still certain and hopeful that it was a DME issue. There is a bit of a gasket on the intake manifold. Just clean it up when you go to throw the DME back in, and then the intake manifold is ready to go back into the vehicle. Because the O-rings were barely used, you were able to reuse them. They're just soft and rubber at the end of the day. So we reused those and rinse and repeat, threw the intake manifold on, torqued it to spec, charge pipe, made sure everything is tight. While I install the DME, Taylor's inside installing the CAS module. It's just to the left of the steering wheel and down a little bit underneath the dash. The car is back together. I really don't like having to redo what I've already done to do it again for the same result. But anyways, we installed the DME. Ironically, the DME, the CAS and the new key, he got the star flavor, is from the original vehicle that this motor came out of. So while I look over it to make sure everything's connected, Taylor is gonna connect the battery and make sure that the injectors are coated just to make sure that we can fire it without any issues. We should program it. So we are waiting for the programming tool, but of course we're impatient. So we're going to fire it with the DME, the cast, and again, this key. Now, the downsides will be, he won't have the MHD backend flash on the vehicle itself, but because it has a three and a half bar map sensor, it's all kind of stored in the JB4 technically, so we really shouldn't have any issues starting it. But again, we're impatient and we wanna fire it. And I think worse comes to worse because the other vehicle had lower mileage is we may get a tamper dot. So a tamper dot's essentially, I believe on the gauge cluster, it just notifies whoever is looking at the vehicle that the vehicle's being tampered with. Clearly, we've tampered with it quite a bit and uh, we're ready for it to be done and <whistles> out of here. Fingers crossed that was the issue. I guess we're gonna see. Just kidding. It's uh, not working. We have a bunch of extra codes. It looks like it's shutting off the signal to the one connector to the DME. And I'm gonna walk over to Taylor so he can point out the tamper dot. Uh, let's, you can see right in between the mileage where it's the actual vehicle mileage and the odometer or whatever it is. There's a little dot right in the center. That's the tamper dot. So if you have that, or if you're seeing a vehicle that has that, mileage is probably rolled back or you got bigger problems. That being said, I think we're gonna have to wait until tomorrow to get it coated and go from there. 
It makes a lot of sense when the DME, the CAS, and the key have one VIN and then the rest of the vehicle is essentially another. Oh, okay, I guess he's closing the window. I didn't want to smell him anyways. We're gonna code it all to be one VIN and see if it fires up. I need to um, set it up to large white guy sitting. Not child position. Since we got the adapter we needed from DHL late yesterday, I think it was just close to 10 o'clock, Taylor couldn't sleep because apparently kids don't sleep. And uh, he came over at 1.30 or something and it was here till three in the morning. Yeah, anyway, it's all cloned, connected, double check the connectors. I guess really now it's gonna be a moment of truth. We're gonna turn the ignition on and I'm just gonna check the codes. And if there's no codes, we're gonna try and start it. So N55. Gods, please rain down your sympathy on me. So far, so good. The tamper dot that was here initially is gone. This is okay. I like to occasionally check in vehicle info and vehicle status. Nothing in check control. I don't know, maybe it's broken, but because I don't have a proper Pro Tools account, all I'm gonna use is the MHD. So let's do codes, read DME codes. Oh, rail pressure sensor, exhaust flap, fan, terminal 87, communication fault. Let's just uh, clear that negativity. Rail pressure, exhaust, terminal 87, no voltage. Hmm, everything looks okay in the engine bay. I don't hear the fuel pump, but give it a crank. That was weird. It tried to fire, but it didn't. Engine malfunction. I'm getting really fed up with this vehicle at this point. I don't know if it's the N55 or just the vehicle with high mileage having electrical gremlins. I needed to go grab the tools and the light, went over to the fuse box and decided I was going to start by looking at all the fuses just to make sure it wasn't something stupid. You have to kind of go back to square one and to the roots to make sure that you end up seeing the simple things to make sure that it doesn't on a BMW develop into a bigger headache. While I was pinning for power on the fuses because there are the little pieces where you can actually test them, I actually found a few fuses that weren't actually getting power. One of the fuses was I believe a fuse 38 and it directly controls the DME. As soon as I ended up pulling this 15 amp fuse, I saw that it was popped pretty good and I had to replace it with a good one. The fuse ended up fixing the terminal 87 error that I had, but of course the vehicle in its annoying glory will say, decided it still wanted to show me the finger and there was other issues that I had to figure out. For whatever reason, it was sending or throwing a sensor issue for the fuel pressure rail sensor. I ended up grabbing one of the ones off the N54 after disconnecting it, error still continued. So whether it was connected or not, the error would maintain and remain. I pulled it off the N54, plugged it in, and although it's off an N54, guess what? It works properly because it's not an N55. So I sent Ozzy home to go get the replacement off the spare motor or the one that was originally in the vehicle, and we replaced it, and ironically, that fixed the code for the fuel rail pressure sensor. All right, round 84. Change the fuel pressure sensor. I wanna see what it's gonna do now. AFRs are going they're doing something, that's okay, I get it. All right, so we still have PT can and ambient air temp sensor. PT can, it seems to be hit or miss. It could end up being a communication error, but what we've kind of narrowed it down to and determined, I'm gonna shut this off for now. Uh, what we've determined is the PT can, because he had X delete flashed previously, is that it could be an error with uh, coding the DME because the PT can, I don't believe, was there prior, but it's there now. But we gotta start it to see what's going on. That fired up way nicer than before. It has to learn to remember that. The AFR is 14.4. High pressure pumps, nine. 
dare I say, I think we got it. Yeah, actually, there's no more check engine light. The 4x4 or ABS, you'll get that when you disconnect the battery, but let's just read the codes really quick. PT can and ambient temp sensor. The ambient temp sensor, for whatever reason, it decided to leave the chat or go on vacation. So where it normally was, it just wasn't there anymore. So we didn't plug it in. We'll just code it out and it's fine. I'm gonna give it some reps. Take it off the skates. We're gonna go for a quick test drive, learn the diff, take you guys for a ride. It's moving! Yeah, the gauge cluster is doing something weird. Oh, Speedo's not even working. Does he have the digital Speedo? Uh, this is reading zero speed too. Okay, we've got sixth gear. Let's go a bit quicker. Seventh gear. That turbo sounds gnarly. It sounds pretty good. Like just the tiniest of tiniest of throttles, and it's actually making some good noise. Oh, tire pressure loss. I'm gonna pull over. We didn't reset it. Just letting you know, I don't know if it's gonna learn the diff without a wheel speed. I don't know why it's uh, not showing wheel speed. Me neither. That could be a CAN TCU thing. You gotta remember this is a beta thing. But my money is on something's not happy with this coding. Yep. Found eight. Uh, do you think it's good now to go into sport mode now uh, that I hit all eight gears? Um, what I would do is I'd probably pull over. I'd probably start from a stop into sport mode. Okay. Just to make sure. Yeah. Is it showing sport? Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to go into eight, but... Probably just a can TCU thing. My money's actually on something to do coding with this cluster. But I can look at that, and if not, then yeah, I'll, like I just sent, sent Ken a message. He was active three hours ago, so I'm doubt he's awake. Sounds pretty good. We're gonna take a slightly uh, longer detour. Sorry, Ozzy. That was awesome. Oh, oh! It sounds so good. It won't learn the clutch because it's not reading wheel speed. So, like, it won't learn the diff or the transmission clutches. It won't learn the diff. Yeah, the transmission—it's learning. I can feel every shift; it's getting better and better. Yes, it just won't learn the diff um, because it needs to be able to read wheel speed. Understandable, right? Yeah. Do you hear the turbo? Well, we made it back to the garage. Uh, it's having a weird DSC, DM, not DME, PT CAN issue. I don't know, with the transmission. It's not reading wheel speed. It's not reading RPM. It has an ABS light, DSC light, SOS light. Bit weird. So we figured maybe it was uh, something to do with the X delete when we clone the DME. But for whatever reason, after the update, X delete says he doesn't have a voucher anymore, which is weird. Okay. So we're going to reach out to X delete, see what's going on. We're going to flash that. We're going to work through the small little gremlins and go from there. The DME ended up being the issue. Um, I think the rail pressure sensor was just a byproduct of something happening 
but we had a spare one and it wasn't the end of the world. I'm sure we'll end up showcasing this car on the channel at some point in the near future, whether it's a review or however, give you some drive-by footage when it's all dialed in. But uh, yeah, we'll bring it to a street in Mexico near you. As always, thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Elvin Child, go! <laughs> this is the face of concern. Yours or mine? <laughs>